natural behavior across the globe and throughout history. Thus, no order rules come into play via the human process of creating a social component of the world, Colin explains. Human beings are not compelled to submit to all contingencies of the natural order, but have the resources to adapt to circumstances to their needs, even when the individual catered primarily to his own needs. Private needs, the course of his actions, instead of hanging inevitably, Chris costs for those of others pursuing their respective ends. As a result, complex patterns of interaction emerge. Human actions do not make up social reality in any causal sense, but to collectively constitute it as a system that tasks and nerves the norms will emerge specified who does one particular area become clear who gives the orders to carry them out. Instead of patterns of coordinated interaction, human beings generate a new pattern of reality, making social reality. Without interaction between people and reality, there wouldn't be needed. Normal rules only come to play in the social sphere, which are those that are and is constructed by humans. Second, all normal decisions presuppose social constructions. A, things don't have value naturally, but we agree to believe certain things are valuable. Call it. Social reality is generated by the way we think or talk about it, and by the concept we use to grasp it. Social facts are thought of as a product of the very intellectual processes through which they are cognized. Mo money tokens are valueless in themselves, but we collectively believe them to possess, uh, possess value. In this way, the belief that money is valuable requires a rational basis. Each of of us is warranted in thinking that money is valuable. Thus, the collective belief that money is valuable is self validating creating its own reality. This also means that my framework comes to superior access to ethics based on rationality, since rational decision making is intrinsically connected to the existence of social conventions. Further, the very situation of the resolution presupposes the existence of family units in which domestic violence can occur. Dem a definition of all the terms of the resolution of society in which it goes with the government in which these things can occur, etc. So all decisions are contextualized by social realities. Third, socially constructed norms raise the gap between general principles and their application to specific situations. Call and summarize the argument. Rules are necessarily abstract and always fail to reach all the way down to the individual case. Uh, all descriptive terms are inherently situated. Whether they apply to a particular thing cannot be inferred by some abstract general definition. For, exa for instance, an ordinance that dictates precautions for the disposal of toxic waste may be made because of the indexicality of the cost of the toxicity and waste. Hence, precisely what aspects we must avoid may be subject to negotiation. There is no ulterior reality to which the application can be compared or possibly rejected as invalid, but it's generated by these social, social negotiations is a construction of the very reality to which the rule applies. It is a construction on social fact. It's impossible to fully describe something or apply a rule without appealing to examples and conventions. So, no rules can't be based on abstract principles, but depends on social convention and what we generally accept as the correct application of morality. Thus, Morality takes the form of norms established from social convention. Next. The only way for moral norms to function is via the enforce and enforcement mechanism, since otherwise it's nonsense to mandate a moral norm if nobody follows it and isn't, it isn't applied to the real world. And this enforcement traditionally takes the form of laws of, and government. Also, the social negotiation necessary for conventions to form can occur in a state of nature, so only ethics that take account of the structure of government are consistent with the constructivism. This derives the principles of the social contract. The way society is conventionally set up is that the government has power over the individuals and we have personal liberty until we come in conflict with the law. There is no natural reason that the government has its authority rather than the people agree to subscribe to the rules of government in exchange for protection. Call it. The problem for political philosophy is how to explain how self-determination may exist alongside the same as the fact of a jury or authority over the individual. The social contract theories were primarily concerned to show that the powers of government derive from the consent of their subjects who thereby empower the state to enforce some of their natural rights. In fact, some of the, the fact that some of society has a particular structure of legitimate political institutions because the members of that society agree to the installation and perpetuation of that structure. Thus, the social contract is the premise upon which moral rules can be based and the foundation of society and the enforcement of rules. I think that under the, uh, under the social contract, affirming is permissible. In the case of domestic violence, the government has failed to uphold the end of the social contract. First, many factors that ca cause domestic violence to be seen as different from other crimes and not dealt with effectively in the criminal justice system. Errors. Research has demonstrated that the police exercise discretion and do not always use arrests as response to domestic violence. As officers' interpretation or understanding of the law believes officers hold regarding battered women and practical considerations as the amount of work involved in processing arrests and the relationship between police administrations and officers are all factors that affect the decision to arrest batterers. Leaders, legal agents may be tolerant of physical aggression that can be rationalized as punishment for women's or marital inadequacy. Such agents are inclined to define marital violence as a simple matter intended for resolution in divorce court. Second, the fact that repeat is in the resolution implies that the government has necessarily failed to stop the abuse if it's been allowed to continue. Third, these factors are expansive. Anita Meyersfield. Many domestic legal systems are notoriously unable to protect women from private torture. In some countries, the official structures are conducive for, to or supportive of their violence as a means of subduing family, family members. In almost all countries that each say that the legal process women can or impediments their call for protection, the police often fail to respond to domestic violence calls and court clerks at lower or level, low, lower level administrative personnel are repeatedly reported as aggressive, accusatory, disinterested, and or hostile. If the case does proceed to the court, the relevant actors may reinforce the power of the batterer, thus furthering women's entrapment. Finally, government funding for domestic Violence projects is usually insufficient to the for, or the first to be reduced in an economic decline. Since the government has failed to protect victims from domestic abuse, it hasn't upheld its end of the contract. Without the social contract establishing governmental authority, all individuals would be at liberty to do whatever they want. We would be in the state of nature. Under the state of nature, everything is permissible. Thus, victims are allowed to do anything in retaliation against their abuse, since they functionally in a state of nature when the social contract isn't be upheld. Thus, situations of domestic violence are functionally in the social contract and it's permissible for the victims to do anything they want in retaliation. That's it. Okay. I see that. You like that? Uh, can you scroll to the top on the map? It's some uh, of, the, of the framework. Yeah. Seven minutes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Where does it say where the what the oh, meth meth constructors? So is this different from like constructivism and ethics, like some fourth guardian conception, right? It to be different, right? Because the fourth guard like has meta constructivism. Yes, yeah, there are, there are like different. multiple different ethical theories that. Right. So, so is this just the argument that 
morality stems from the subject or from your agency? No, morality stems from social convention. Okay. That's the type of thing. Not the same. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just making sure. So, at what point do we know whether the government has failed? For example, if somebody punches me, and like, like, no one stops that. Does that mean I can do whatever I want to that person? Um, I think. Uh, like, if you poke me, can I kill you? Aren't there certain constraints? No, I'd say first of all, like, is poking is probably not. Uh, like denial of your like safety, right? Well, like, there's significant harm that is not. So, like, if I you. punch you, or sorry, if you punch me, then if can you I were kill repeatedly you? punching me, then yeah, probably. Why? Why does that matter? Your argument is that if the government because is not there, then it is permissible. But if the government is not there in one instance, why does that change things? Mm. I mean, I'd say the government probably has had. So, aren't there certain constraints the besides the government being there? Stop it, right? The government. If you punch me once, right, there's right. no re like way that the government is really going to uh, have an opportunity to stop that. Additionally, that's not illegal, right? So that's probably one way that that is not a situation we're talking about. We're talking about like things that are conventionally illegal, where the government is what not doing conventionally illegal. Like I'm not allowed to. You're not allowed to like punch me, right? If I punch you, I'm not going to get arrested, right? Like if I mean, domestic could, violence right? is illegal. Okay, so like beating people up isn't illegal. Pretty sure that's illegal, okay. right? Well, so like in, this, in that case, is it permissible for me to do whatever? But aren't there some constraints on what you can do, like proportionality or no, imminence? No. So there's no, no constraint on anything you can do under morality of the government. As not long there. as I can show that the government is not at, like government had an opportunity to stop the problem and it is not. I mean, that's actually pretty sense. ridiculous, right? Like if, I, if you poke me and I tell you stop and then the government like, doesn't respond. First of all, I'm you like a couple reasons why poking is not a good. Example. I mean, sure, but like there are a lot of different examples that would have. Like, I mean, maybe it's not different. intuitive to you, but that's what my okay. favorite is. Right. But I mean, sure. the examples you're giving are not sure. like value ones. Okay. So, what does constructivism exclude? What do you mean? Like, what what do these cards? What what can this exclude? They justify my framework. It would exclude right. anything that is not so the like, same as my framework. So, like, for example, what what would not be included under a under constructivism? Most other. Okay, that's not helpful, but fair enough. I mean, do you want to propose various ideas, and I'll tell you whether that links in or not? Like, um, sure. So let's say I run a Kantian thing. Okay. Probably not. What? Probably not. It probably not link it. Okay. Right. And the reason would be what? Multiple. All right. I mean, the, at, the, at the most fundamental level, because it's not based in what society has like generally agreed. Right. It's not based. In okay. Convention. I mean, but there are other. Like, so like at what point do we know what social convention is? Um, when it is like you know, solidified in our culture, when it is a presupposition of our interaction, right? And a presupposition of our interaction is that the government like rules over us. Like I, a presupposition of my life is that the government has authority and there are laws. Mm What types of situations would the government have failed in? So, would a fight between a man and a woman, like the man punches the woman, is that, is, what does that classify as? If it classifies as domestic violence, right. the government is not doing an effective job at stopping it, and they are not upholding their end of social conflict. Basically, if a woman, like, is in danger, and the government right. is not protecting her. So, if the woman, her. so if there's a confrontational situation where a woman and a man are fighting, and the government is not there, or police is not there, then it is permissible, right, for the woman to kill in self defense. Right, especially right. when it's
10C AC. My interpretation that Mary Wolf's strong line implies that deliberate is made given or done full awareness when it's doing this means the word deliberate in the resolution tail of the decision used deadly force to pre plan, wait against potential alternative force and action derived nationally in common couple state of mind as opposed to deadly force using no confrontation involved with the violations that I check from cross examination, what types of situations are involved in which the government is failed, she says, and when a woman is being beaten by a man in repeated instances, i.e. in a confrontational situation, that would be that it would be permissible for a woman to act in that instance, i.e. in the middle of a fight. My argument is to lose the confrontational situation stands one's real world usage, A is common usage, popular understanding of deliberate killings consists my interpretation, my command high reports multiple authors. Deliberate implies the operation of random and irrational the process to question the execution of the plan to kill the exclusion of all their alternatives would be suitable to require the process of deliberation here after the in a calm state of mind, non intent to state of mind, public mind, deliver murder, both care for the planning for the state of events. Deliberation means to act in a cool state, calm use, just controlling the internal link, really properly understand the term phrase the way they use the literature, the way they phrase the talks about my events, an expert field means specifically about the calm use, using the term is not allowed to swift the officer in the control, they need to write qualified evidence based differently compared to the quality of my evidence, fixed those key principles, in order to be prepared to be based on the arguments based on the field, fixed the argument, give the wording of the Second, legal usage, or B. My interpretation of those consists of legal exchange, the liberal killing case law, and people will be people be Thomas Cook, and Suzanne Mounts, uh, Suzanne Mounts explains. The ability to surely meet clear reflection can be associated with the bold decision on deliberation, blame which rights and the definition of deliberate in Webster's dictionary, which includes way of the mind considered reason for and against the surely reflect the legal exchange terms for our focus is the most stable block. Definitions are man-made, not going up so on some high definitions by lower servers who use the purpose of giving all people the opportunity to comment to shame what they mean when you use working manufacturers, legal product, like an antiseptic or disinfectant is imperative their product uh, does what the terms say it should do. This is difficult to do when beings are vague legal definitions to clarify beings and given greater stability in 19, uh, 25 years of your account. Street, even if it was necessary to give drug manufacturers legal definition for the antiseptic so that this class of drugs be controlled by the government words such as antiseptic, uh, disinfectant, sanitizer, excellent examples of words that have loosely accepted means until we're more strictly defined. The law provides the most direct and stable definition, legal definition, codified and understanding of the terms that it's how to respond, making the most real world because they are definitions, which is relevant to our lives, and that there are definitions that collectively and of course, and everyone by society and state also legal definitions shape the arguments that are made in the real world and popular truth because there are arguments about how society should address problems and empathy folks on the law of the government is the only proper dimension that has the power to enforce solutions to its problems, top includes key adventures, even for arguments, theoretic foods, they can only be effectively accessed around solve all solid empathy, but qualified arguments. Used by the debaters to use the voter vote and structural fairness parameters to establish for debate or fair faith, just relevant skills, structural and fairness, uh, defined by burdens established in the round of the franchise, and creating well skills, voting and fairness necessary to reflect voluntary tasks being performed based on debate and lowland rights. The obligation of parents not to rise on conditioning parties voluntarily engage their choice participation or non participation of tasks that could fall upon the accepted rules and norms of practice. Burdens are established in arbitrary ways that is not definite, would initiate, and would issue which contribute to or assume more cooperation, judge, force rules, but she or she has the obligation of truly discerning which rules contribute to best fair rules of the base for tasks and exporting the basis. The first of those judgments would violate the transparent and activity of the class. Thus, judges obligate the voting parents to conform to their obligations and also drop the debate because the judgments voted violate the transparent and directed by a broken contract of and two. In the case of intentional violations, restoration of the initial situation is not enough contract to contract which participants were voluntarily strict their liberty, completed setting mutual trust and broken intention for violation, call for additional penalties, one or given one. Player and spell from the game. Also, uh, T should come before theory issues because A is the first role and aspect of the debate top down. Because of the AC, we'll go on to any other views. B and B friends, the rest of the debate top. This initial baseline for our reputation T issues must be resolved prior to discussion. Secondary issues, no RBIs on T1. You'd reward the app for just being topical next, not have top value. But it does not make sense. Save the ass and turks better than things. Not having topical is like rewarding someone from wearing pants to debate turn. It's like there are always a true street because after around theory and other issues, there's a reason why it has to be a true issue. the same one. Secondly, through two, we've discussed better and turks favorite debate, which is better theory. So that's where storms overall, the storms contingent upon skills, post objective termination would we'll be good for the community. Five RBIs are worse for the app because T1 by the mountain going on and not there covering it just leaves the app up on substance because both lose time. And see. I need all moral theories between the random and qualified things, prime facial and permissible theories, theory, vectoring and self defense, world forms, does of course seek to justify the action based specific circumstances over and the action permissible, therefore resolution questions what they action act defense which describes permissible meet the action based in circumstances around the app is consistent for social defense argument because they're different between epistemic and ontic justification for permissibility because the resolution asks A whether killing the abuser is permissible, suggesting an ontic justification B is not on face qualified by any mod press just believe the role of justification or ontic as opposed to epistemic right explains both prime facial and permissibility and ontic justification. To save an act that is prime facially permissible simply to say that by virtue of being a certain kind it would be in fact impermissible unless it would also over some other moral relevant kind it being some of the kind of voice that's being performed, kind of circumstances to find all the act types in which the act token is instance has to say that a particular act of violence is prima facie impermissible to say that B is of an act type, say violent act whose instances are in fact impermissible, except when they are also of some other morally relevant act type, in, case, in which case that B is morally permissible. Within this context, the prima facie wrong act is ontically morally justified. It means that given all relevant circumstances in the matter in which the act is performed is a, a matter of fact morally permissible, even though we're one of the act types which would be an instance to be the sole criteria in fact be impermissible. Epistemic moral justification refers to the satisfactory of the argument, or in support of the belief that a prime facial wrong is ontically justified, but uh, with respect to an act of violence. B to say that B is ontically morally justified, say that B is not only an impermissible act, but also a permissible act in certain cases. Do that B is epistemically morally justified, say that the agent is justified in believing that the act is morally permissible. This argument is about a given agent's belief or some circumstances around the surrounding the action, right? Epistemic is opposed to ontic justification. This is true because belief is not consistent with ontic status. In these cases, it does not make sense that the agent itself, the act itself, is morally permissible. If it is epistemically justified, we can only morally excuse the agent, not say that the act is morally permissible, right? And two. 
What follows is that the act of alms cannot be morally judged by the F7 sense without being morally judged by the obvious sense. That is, one can have good grounds for believing that it is morally permissible. You can do not in such case. It would make sense to say that the agent's due to be morally excused due to non-couple ignorance of relevant facts that the agent's morally blameless was having for a morally impermissible action. This negates because we would say that when you morally excuse an agent, it is an impermissible action. You would do rhetoric right, morally excusable as opposed to moral permissibility, which would say that the act is laudable. Moral excuse is different from moral permissibility, right and free. We distinguish between justification by an act excuse and acts morally justified as morally permissible. Acts excuse is not permissible, but the agent is blameless for the morally impermissible action. In fact, epistemic justification of beliefs excuse uh, those uh, uh, maximum result in excuse not justification defense. Milheiser. The books upon the act are not the acts fundamentally absent justification. Justification presupposes that the actor should have condition respond because under certain states the action is laudable. For example, in the VWS theory, it's not based on argument that crimes killing the battery may have the side rather to conserve the debilitating effects of physical abuse cause women to engage in otherwise criminal conduct. Please be focused upon the circumstances surrounding the actor as opposed to the act of uh, killing uh, act of killing itself means that you can only morally excuse the action. Then uh, on the AC. First, as an overview, uh, I, I can accept the constructivism stuff at the top and the theory stuff. I've checked the cross-examination argument because she says that they exist in complicated situations. Go to Colin on the social contract. So, actually, as an overview to the framework, uh, morality has to be pre-contractual. Pre whether we can do terrible things as a state of nation, but that doesn't mean that those things are good. If this argument is not true, there is no reason why we want to avoid the state of nation in the first place to make a judgment. We have to have pre-contractual normative judgment, so it is not just determined by social defense or any sort of government. Second of all, uh, second, second of all we, you know, my argument is that it should be, it is not based on self-defense because it's not truly normative. The idea of social contract is not related to self-defense. Thomas writes, conceptualizing white supremacy's political system allows us to reject social contract theory. Contract theory assumes the man chose to reject the state of nation from society both on consent authority for the way but if such a covenant exists, and that covenant exists as an exclusionary tool perhaps white man came together with the original contract was racial. That people of color prohibited from making sins, but so the ability to test such contract because color of, to be of color is beyond the human racial pact has led to institutions that have been denied acts to people called the abstract class of social contract theory explains abstract notions of freedom, equality, and justice. No way changes that over the course of the 500 years, wise decision power of such maintaining and expand power, though the uh, explanation in global south there exists a common sort of ideological group of colonization appears in the Western culture. This means that the basis of social contracts is not just by any sort of self-defense explanations, it is used by like powerful people to reinforce existing power structures. So it's not something that can be used to apply to self-defense because that is not the original reason and our audience for contractual to that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Ready? Yep. Why is my AC specifically excusing and not just? It's not that, well, okay, so my argument is that when you talk about uh, an epistemic justification, i.e., when you're talking about the relevant knowledge we have about the circumstance, not the act itself, but rather the actor, i.e. the people in the circumstances. Why am I talking about the circumstances? Well, that's like my argument. Aren't I saying right? any, it like, aren't, didn't I specifically say in cross-examination that well, no, the circumstance, proportionality uh, no, the circumstances are irrelevant? Right? It's not about proportionality, okay. right? It's not a proportionality how, argument, well, why, argument, right? Why are we talking about like specific the argument is that when you're talking about how things are determined through social, social convention first, and how in specific instances when the government has failed, the actor is allowed to act in self-defense on the condition that the government has failed. You are not saying that the act is morally permissible, i.e. the act type, you are saying that the instance of the act because of the actor is morally permissible. My argument is that if you okay. base things on the actor's circumstance, then that is only a morally Okay, so what, what would a justification <coughs> look like that's not based on circumstance? Um, you, well, my argument is in this case, right, it wouldn't, that your justification would be self defense right. from an objective standpoint. Right, but what, what types of justifications are consistent? Can you give me I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it doesn't have to be arguments, right? It could be, it could be just like a type of justifying any action that is consistent with, like, so like you would say that the act of killing is morally permissible. Right. Or the act, whatever act you take, regardless of the circumstance in which you take it in. So the act type would be permissible as opposed to the act token. The act token okay. being the instance of the act type. Okay, so pretty much because the resolution has conditions, i.e. No, it's not about, the resolution doesn't necessarily have conditions. It's just that you're talking about The resolution about the isn't killing is permissible, right? The resolution says killing in the case well, of. Well, no. I mean, I'm not applying it that way. I'm applying it in the way that you're using it in terms of how when the government fails in that circumstance, the actor, because because of that condition, then the actor would be, uh, it would be, the actor would be excused as opposed to normal judgment. Okay, that's fine. Is this everything you read? Um, well, I read a card right here. And T. Can you see that? Um, yeah, that'll be good. All right, so these two. Just file that one. And you conceded everything in the AC above the stuff about social I mean, I mean, complications to it from the team, but I had yeah. the answer it to look on the agency.
the order is going to be. Are you reading it? Yeah. Alright. So I'm sorry, you had two minutes for me? 145. Uh-huh.
response to IMET. You said cross-ex checks, then it's not your whole advocacy, and then what else? Okay, no, the number one is your definition right. doesn't say what you say it says. Number okay. two is, the, uh, like, your my advocacy is not that it has to be in the moment, and that's not what you asked me in CX. No, and number three is, even if that is part of my advocacy, it's not my whole advocacy, so my advocacy still. Okay, all right. Uh, starting on T, then on the NC, then on the AC. Okay, ready? The big mistake that she makes in the last speech is she does not generate any offense on T, which means if there is any risk that she violates, and that means I win because all of her defense for arguments are all real, are all defense as opposed to the offense that I'm generating. So there is always a risk of offense if she violates topicality. Send my interpretation of Merriam Webster on my defense deliberate is made, given her normal full awareness when it was doing the, the implications that my interpretation is that the world deliberate in the resolution details the decision to use deadly force is pre planned, weighed against potential alternative force of action and derived rationally. Even if she wins that my definition does not say that at all, that is still in the analytical part of my interpretation. She still has to win a counter interpretation that is better because my reasons for why you should prefer my interpretation are on the standards level. That does not mean that my interpretation is so what she is meeting, because my interpretation analytically is she is not meeting. So even if I can see that she meets the definitional part, that's not true. But second, my definition talks about how it's made to give and done with full awareness of what it's doing, and these standards do contextualize what that means legally, because my argument is that legally, when you are fully aware of what you're doing, that necessarily requires a couple state of mind, which is, again, in the interpretation as opposed to the evidence in the standards level. So they are in both places. Her argument about why this is not fair is ridiculous, because my argument is that even if there's some if there's some question as to whether or not she meets or doesn't meet top county, the only way that you can clarify that issue is through these standards level, what, the definitions that I give on the standards level that clarify common usage and legal usage is the only way that you can resolve theories if it's just by making a blanket statement about how she meets it because it is clarified through the standards level. Also, there's no theoretical implication to these arguments, so which means that she still has to wait against the other theory arguments that are winning the round. So she still has to compare arguments where she's not generating any offense. Then, on the argument, she made the argument that cross said she didn't understand my cross question. First, this is a theory, this is a defensive theory argument. There's no reason why this is terminal defense. If I win a risk of offense, she, if she's violating top now, we win a risk of offense, and I still win on T. Second of all, it is not my job to ask her cross examination questions, but I did ask her cross question. The fact that she did not understand it does not mean that she meets the top county interpretation. It's not my fault that she's not understanding cross examination arguments. Her number three is that it is not her whole advocacy. That just means that part of her advocacy is not topical. That doesn't mean, you know, you, you know that doesn't mean she's not, uh, that doesn't mean she meets the interpretation. That just means that she's advocating a not topical position, and like one argument is top that That's not how top quality works. Then on the standards, or rather, extend the violation is when I asked her in cross-examination whether or not her instance is included, like a man uh, beating his wife in that instance, and the wife calling the police if the police doesn't, or if the police doesn't show up in that, it means that it's, it's okay for the wife to kill the abuser. That is a confrontational situation. I specifically use the word confrontational, and she said that that occurs. Remember, my evidence talks about how confrontational versus non-confrontational situations. There's a big difference in the justification. To send the eighth one on Mannheim, the common use of the popular standard of deliberate killings consists with my interpretation, because deliberate implies the operation of a rational mental process in which questions the execution of a plan to kill the exclusion of other alternatives that would be suitable to require the process of deliberation carried out composedly in a calm state of mind that is a clarification extend that calm use of the internal link predictability popular understanding of the terms phrase the way the terms are used in the literature debate the way the prepared debate talks about them that means the use of the predictability keeps parents because no one to be prepared to be a particular argument so they just need to be able to predict the argument given the word of the topic then uh, extend the voter of fairness to be on the structure of fairness the only one evidence says the parameters of shelf should be a fair if they test for all the skills of quality solve all the variations of the voter then extend the argument uh, uh, they, they are so extend the argument only to the drop the debate because the judgment is voted violations of fairness directed by the broken contract of contest so if you think that there's a risk that she is violating the topicality it means you vote for me. You should not give her leeway on this issue because she should have been, uh, because the fact that she didn't understand my cross question, because she should have actually spent more time. She spent like 30 seconds on this argument. Then, uh, go to the end scene. The problem with her extension of the definition of the NC, that is the only response she has. The problem is her definition says that this is what permissibility is. I, I, permissibility is something that you do not violate. So, by the way, as a clarification, if I lose T, she doesn't win the round. So she still has to win the potential level arguments. So first, her extension of the handle definition doesn't make any sense because my argument is that uh, my argument is that just because permissibility means the absence of something, excuse means that something is impermissible, but you are excused. The implication that she draws is that morality does not function. But that doesn't mean that morality does not function for me. Morality functions for me because you can say that you are morally excused. Morally, moral excusability is a moral or a normative judgment you place on something. So morality still functions in my world, i.e. the world of moral excuse, but it does not function in her world, i.e. the world of moral permissibility. So that just means that her framework doesn't function, which means you should reject it. That takes out the second implication that she is drawing. So. Let's extend the NC. The first, extend that from the top of the AC that all actions of killing are, uh, or all moral theories presume that killing randomly is morally impermissible, so the act type is already assumed to be impermissible. That means that you have to provide a specific exception in a, source, in a specific circumstance under resolution in terms of self defense. Extending right one out is that there's a difference between ontic and epistemic justifications. Ontic justifications are about whether the act is, or the act type is, is morally permissible versus epistemic justification rely on circumstances and agents' belief regarding those circumstances. That means that there is a distinction. Extending right, right two out of it says that that means you can only morally excuse the action because moral excusability says that the act type is generally impermissible. The 
act token, i.e. the specific action is the agent is not responsible for the circumstances or the or other circumstances led the agent have no other option or the government failed. For example, if the government is failing, then there's no other option for the agent to take. That means you would morally excuse the agent. Then extending right three, there's a difference between justification and excuse that moral permissibility is about justification versus moral but impermissibility is about excuse when you it is morally impermissible but you excuse the action. So it is competitive. You cannot have both definitions functionally do the same thing because I'm proving that something is morally impermissible but excused. You cannot say there are three different categories, not permissibility, impermissibility, excuse. It's permissibility or impermissibility, excuse is a subset of that. So she's conceding that argument. Then let's go to the AC. The problem with the AC is that she's conceding uh, certain arguments that are going to be problematic. First, she's extending that I can't apply my audience without social convention. So if my arguments don't make any sense. If you remember that also, my response about how you can morally apply the excuse NC still makes sense because you can morally apply my negative case just because her case doesn't function. Then go to the Thomas argument about the justifications of the racism. So, this is not just an argument that social contract theory is racist. This application is to self defense. Extend the, uh, that uh, morality should be normative because it is, it is, the social contract is not truly normative because the idea of a social contract isn't related to self defense, i.e., it, we do not go into the social contract in order to solve violence. My argument is that uh, uh, rich people or, or rich powerful people created the social contract in order to maintain their power hierarchies, which means there is no connection between self defense or, 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 or something being morally permissible for you to act in self defense and kill somebody uh, under the social contract. That is a terminal defense on the AC because it means that it is a reason why you should reject this, or it's not terminal defense, it's offense because it's a reason why you should reject these arguments. In favor of uh, saying that it is impermissible because you cannot justify permissibility under the social contract. The way the round makes sense first, she is violating T. She should have spent more time with this argument. Second, on the excuse since she's been understanding how the categories work, and she's conceding all the other arguments and the common sense. Okay.